Hi, it's Tuesday, January the 18th, and I continue to read and wonder my way through the book of Genesis. And today it's Genesis chapter 30, verses 1 through 13. Um, and um, yeah, as we begin this chapter, just to catch up really quickly, uh, Jacob, you remember Jacob, son of Isaac and Rebekah? Uh, Jacob has two wives, um, sisters, um, the younger sister Rachel, the older sister Leah. That was never his plan. He was hoping for one wife, uh, Rachel, the younger, who he loves. But through Rachel and Leah's father's manipulations, Jacob is tricked into marrying Leah first, and then uh, a week later gets to marry Rachel, um, for which he owes 14 years of labor, by the way, for, for their father Laban. Um, Anyway, so the thing is that he doesn't despise Leah, but he doesn't love her like he loves Rachel. There is a, there is a, a, a tension between them, a rivalry between them, um, and, and Leah feels, um, feels unloved. And then, according to the text, God, seemingly in support of Leah, um, tries to help Leah out by basically opening her womb. So she has four sons with Jacob. She thinks that having the children with Jacob will make Jacob love her, and I guess God thought so too, um, because that's got what God has done, um, but that's not how it works. Um, uh, again, Jacob doesn't despise Leah, very happy to have sons, um, but he still loves Rachel um, romantically. That, that's, he, loves, he loves Rachel. Um, and that's basically where we pick it up. So Leah and Rachel, Leah's got four kids um, with God's help. Um, Rachel uh, has none, and um, Jacob still loves Rachel. There we go. Genesis 30, verses 1 to 13. When Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, she envied her sister, and she said to Jacob, Give me children, or I shall die. Jacob became very angry with Rachel and said, Am I in the place of God, who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? Then she said, Here is my maid Bilhal. Go unto her that she may bear upon my knees that I too may have children through her. So she gave him her maid Bilhah, his wife, and Jacob went into her. And Bilhah conceived, and Jacob bore a son, and bore Jacob a son. Then Rachel said, God has judged me and has also heard my voice and given me a son. Therefore she named him Dan. Rachel's maid Bilhah conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, With mighty wrestlings I have wrestled with my sister and have prevailed. So she named him Naphtali. Then Leah saw that she had ceased bearing children. She took her maid Zilpah and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Then Leah's maid Zilpah bore Jacob a son, and Leah said, Good fortune, so she named him Gad. And Leah's maid Zilpah bore Jacob a second son, and Leah said, Happy am I, for the women will call me happy, so she named him Asher. So, um... I, I, I want to read the whole thing. I, I feel silly almost stopping here, um, but but I'm stopping here. Um, so just a couple of quick things. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you already sort of figured this out. Uh, the first son that Jacob was going to have with uh, with with the maid Bilhah, Rachel's uh, maid servant Bilhah, is uh, Dan. Dan essentially means judgment, right? She said, "God has judged me, but heard me," and so she names their son Judgment. She names the second son, Naphtali, names him struggle. Basically, Naphtali means struggle or wrestling. Um, so God has judged me and also heard my voice, given me a son. We'll call him judgment. With many wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister and have prevailed. So she names her son struggle or wrestling. Um, lovely names for the kids. <laughs> Mom, why did you call me struggle? Because I hate your aunt. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so that that's how that works. Uh, then Leah goes... Oh, so you're having kids with using your maid. Huh, I should do that too. So sends Jacob to her maid um, and and also has two good ch has two children to cry good fortune when the first one is born uh, and so names him Gad, which means luck. And, uh, and then finally Asher, um, which means blessed. Um, happy am I for the women will call me happy. Uh, blessed, it also kind of means victory. Um, so, um, yeah, so we have four kids now, uh, named Judgment and Struggle, Luck and Blessed Victory. <laughs> so we're seeing this rivalry lived out, at least in the naming of children. Um, I'm not sure what there is for us to consider in a modern context. I mean, 
I, I know. I, I do have some idea in a modern context. In a modern context, I am quite concerned um, that that Rachel's identity is entirely driven by her ability to have children. It's not enough for her that that Jacob loves her. She needs to be as good or better than her sister. Uh, even though she has the one thing her sister wants, that's not enough. So it, it, it is identity around children. Now, we saw that same thing, though, with Leah, right? Leah, Leah felt if she had children, then, then, then Jacob would love her. So both of these women are finding their identity in terms of having children uh, and having um, ideally male children, um, just to put it into context, and to have male children to make their husband's husband happy. A um, lot of patriarchy here. Um, and I think if you look at it in the midst of the, in, in the in the context of the story, it, it serves nobody. Um, it, it it just doesn't you know. I mean, if if indeed Jacob loves uh, Rachel and rather just be with her, um, he's running around um, from wife to wife, and then he's added essentially two more wives, um, and he all he ever wanted was one. Um, but because of the patriarchy, patriarchy and the need to uh, have male children and to make the man happy, nobody's happy. So that's a modern <laughs> take on that. And 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 I I know that that uh, I have a lot of men who follow this, and and we often bristle at patriarchy. Oh, come on, that's not about me. That's not my thing. However, you. Um, recognize uh, the patriarchy and however you, however you recognize your relationship to it. It is worth spending a little bit of time and wondering, okay, so how much of this is, how much of the world that I live in is is, is male-centric based on uh, on men's desires, men's opinions, men's perspectives? Um, how much of that is true? And And I think it's worth wondering, where you can start to break that down, disconnect from that yourself. And and I say that because, not because, oh, that's the modern thing, we should be doing that, of course, we must bring down the patriarchy. We've wanted to bring down the patriarchy, we've needed to bring down the patriarchy, frankly, for thousands of years. Um, and here, to me, is is a story about where the patriarchy is not working. Now, I don't know whether... The first hearers of these stories in Genesis would have said, oh, this is a criticism of the patriarchy. Oh, I get it. No, likely they didn't. But I do think it's in there. Um, I really do. Um, the other possibility for this piece for me is, is that it reads very much um, the way I was reading the story of Lot in, 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 in Sodom and then, and then beyond uh, after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, I think if you heard my, me uh, ponder that and wonder about it, uh, it felt to me like a comic opera. Um, Lot is so stupid um, that, that this can't be anything other than a funny story, a comic opera. Well, when I come to this story, it's it's funny. I can't I can't not laugh at this. In fact, I have done comedic presentations of of, of the story of Jacob, um, and and you know being being fooled into marrying two women and, and putting in fourteen years of work, um, and uh, yeah, and ending up with four wives and 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 all of that. I mean, it is funny. This is a this is a farce. Um, you know, he goes and he falls in love with Rachel and goes, okay, everything's gonna be great. Remember, he kissed her and wept like I. I I can imagine as you tell the story, it's like, oh, look, he's finally home. And then home becomes a, 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 a slamming doors farce. He's in and out of this tent, that tent. He's sleeping with that woman, that woman, this woman, that woman. He's having all sorts of kids, and the kids are named Struggle and Wrestling and Yay, I Win and I Hate My Sister and all those names. That, that You can't not find this funny. I mean, to me, this is a farce. Um, Jacob has no power in this other than the one moment he goes, oh, come on, for God's sakes, it's my fault you can't have kids. <gasps> You're right. You need to sleep with my maid. That's going to give me children. Surely even then people would come like, <laughs> come on, come on, Rach, think this through. Um, because we know this is exactly what happened with, with Sarah and, 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 and Abraham. And that didn't work out very well, did it? 
Um, <laughs> uh, you know, so so hapless Jacob is is just repeating um, the past uh, without even knowing it because he doesn't even have a chance to stop and think. I mean, if I were doing this as a play, uh, like I say, a slamming door farce, he's in and out of every room, and he doesn't even know who he's sleeping with one night, and every night he's got to ask, who are you again? Oh, that's right, good, okay. Am I supposed to be here? Oh, good, I am, terrific. What are our kids' names again? Oh, luck and fortune. Okay, this is a good place to be. Um, I, can, I, can, I can just see that. And so this becomes an entertainment. But what does that offer to us then in terms of scripture? Um... I don't know. I'm not just reaching here. I will suggest to you that my life often seems farcical. Things happen that just like, oh, come on, seriously. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, an example that has nothing to do with the story, but it's just relevant to me in this moment. Uh, we had a couple of feet of snow dumped on, not a couple of feet, foot and a half of snow dumped on us uh, yesterday here where I live in, in, in Pickering. Um, and um, so I got out my trusty snow lower, which by the way, I had checked out and tuned up and everything. I knew it was running. It was working well. I was almost looking forward to the snowfall because I rarely get to use my snow blower. We just don't have that much snow anymore. And my wife loves shoveling. I don't know. Figure that out. Anyway, so we got this massive snowfall. It's fabulous. I get out there. I get the sidewalks clear, which is good because I have a very long sidewalk. Uh, so now I know my neighbors can get by, and that's good. I feel good about that. And then there's a little cable that makes the thing turn. It's the auger engagement cord. I know you care about that. It snaps. So my snowblower stops working. <laughs> really? I haven't need my, needed my snowblower in any major way in over a year. Probably haven't needed haven't needed it like I needed it yesterday in at least a decade. Um, and that's when uh, a cord decides to snap. Not to worry, I can order it and have it delivered next week. <laughs> it doesn't do me any good. My life is a farce at times. Yesterday was my first day off of my vacation. Uh, and I thought, we'd well, you know, all go for a nice walk. I'm going to work out. Oh, I got all that in. I got that in in the morning. Uh, just uh, shoveling. And, uh, and like I said, shoveling. A lot of shoveling. Of uh, very high, lots of snow. There's a farce in that to me. Um... But rather than just laugh at it, I, 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 I can look for God in the midst of the farce. You see what I'm saying? That, that, that I think God is active in this farce with Jacob. God is active in the farce with me. I'm not going to turn this into a sermon. But you know what? I'm talking to neighbors the way I have in a while because I'm actually out there shoveling. It's not as loud. Um, I'm not doing as much for other neighbors who I often would go and blow their snow in a, in a, in a major snowfall. But instead, they're coming in there helping me. Uh, it was lovely, actually. Um, my muscles are a little more sore than they would normally be. Um, but I feel more connected to my neighbors. God works in this farce. How is God working in this farce? Well, I'm not sure yet, except that Except that I know that Jacob is supposed to have a whole bunch of kids, right? Because this the covenant is being is 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 happening through him, and so um, spoiler alert: I know he's going to end up with at least twelve. Um, but um, but I wonder had he had he loved Rachel and been able to be married with Rachel, would they have, would they have had twelve kids? I'm going to suggest maybe not. Um, so in the midst of this farce where he is being sent from woman to woman to woman, <laughs> can't be children, I'll die. Fine, I'll sleep with my maid. Do it now. Um, if, if, if that wasn't happening, then we're not having all of these kids who are, of course, going to be very important to the story. So I wonder if that's the sort of overall message that we can wonder about how God acts in the farce that is our life. Because some of us, when we look at life, it, it, it can't not be absurd. There's just so much about our lives that is absurd. And, and so I think perhaps what Scripture is recommending here is that we look at our lives with a good sense of humor <laughs> and laugh at them, laugh at ourselves, uh, and then in the laughter start to recognize where God's love is being manifested. Right here, the covenant is starting to 
to to be manifest. We're, we're going to have enough kids that we could actually imagine now starting to to have generations that will number like the stars in the sky or the, or the sand on uh, in the desert. Um, so I think that's probably my takeaway. There may be better takeaways. Uh, and there might just be messages here about dysfunctional families and how some families are just never going to get it. Um, Rachel and Leah, um, jealous of each other. And each other has what the other wants. I mean, it's, it's you know, Rachel can't be happy just being loved. Leah can't be happy saying, well, I have these wonderful children. Um, yeah. So I'm going to... And yet God functions through that, right? God somehow gets through that. So all those times that we're pretty sure we've messed it up and, and, and ruined it for God, no. Nah. No, even even Jacob and Rachel and Leah um, and Bilhah, I guess, and Zilpah. I don't name them because they seem to have no agency, bless them. Um, but yeah, they can't stop God from, from being manifest. Um, so it's a, I, I, I take that to heart and recognize that, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not thwarting God's will. I can be part of it or not part of it. I can follow, but eventually it's coming. Anyway, I'm going to stop right there and, uh, offer a prayer. So let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to, to consider stories, stories of scripture that, that somehow even mirror stories in our lives. We thank you for the opportunity to, to laugh, to, to smile, to recognize the absurdity of what goes on in our lives, but to also recognize your presence in the midst of absurdity. So God, thank you for today's wondering. And we ask that everything that we wonder about today, we ask that it, Inspire not just smiles, but but insight, but faith. May we grow in faith today. May we come closer to you. We pray through the Holy Spirit and in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's it for me today. But um, whether your life is wonderful, absurd, peaceful, full of struggle, um, whatever is going on in your life today, please please know that if we take this story seriously, then God is with us when we feel judged. God is with us when we wrestle. Uh, God is with us when we are lucky, and God is with us when we are happy. So somewhere in all of that, I'm sure you find yourself. So please know that you're not alone, that God is with you. And please come back tomorrow, and we'll see what happens next. God bless. We'll see you soon.